Okay, so no one watching this video should get this problem wrong because I am going to let you use your calculator. All right, now the question is, one is equal to what expression over here? Again, feel free to use your calculator, but our first option is A, and that is sine squared plus cosine squared. Now, what does this mean? I'll explain this in just one second, but that is A. B is negative three divided by negative three. C is 10 to the zero power, and D is all of the above. All right, so one is equal to which one of these expressions or which is the right answer? Well, again, feel free to use your calculator. And if you can figure this out, we'll go to put your answer into the comment section. I'll show the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, feel free to use your calculator. And uh, hopefully you know how to use your calculator, because if you can, again, no one should get this problem wrong. All right, so what is the right answer? Well, the correct answer here is D, all of the above. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being an outstanding multiple choice uh, question test taker. All right, so that's just kind of a long-winded way of saying, hey, you figured this out because um, uh, probably those of you out there that don't really understand this thing right here, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I have no idea what this is but you uh, kind of determined that these were one, okay? Well, then the answer must be all of the above. So let me go ahead and get into this right now. And uh, again, uh, I said, hey, use your, use your calculator, but some of you uh, may not have been able to figure this out with your calculator. All right, but let's go ahead and get into this step by step. And uh, one is equal to what? Well, we know the answer is all of the above. And uh, I'll leave this thing right here um, uh, to the last. Uh, what we're looking at here is something uh, in trigonometry. So don't let this intimidate you because here's the thing. If we can determine that uh, more than one of these choices is equal to one, well, then this must be equal to one because we don't have any other choices, right? So this is just kind of common sense test taking here. So let's start with uh, B, okay? Negative three divided by negative three. Now, hopefully some of you um, already know how to, uh, how to divide uh, positive and negative numbers, but when you divide a negative, okay, a negative divided by a negative is equal to a positive. But if you have your calculator handy, what you would do is uh, you would type in a three. Matter of fact, let's say it all depends on your calculator, but there is a little um, sign. It's usually like a button like this, but it indicates a negative value. It's not the subtraction operator. It's uh, another type of operator. So you can just type that in so you can get a negative three on your screen, divide that by another negative three, and you'll see you'll get a positive one. All right, so hopefully this was pretty easy for most of you. Now let's talk about 10 to the zero power. Now anything to the zero power is one. Now, if you didn't know that, again, you could have used your calculator, but how do you take powers and exponents in your calculator? Let's talk about that right now. Okay, so 10 to the zero power, uh, this is how you would have to type it into most calculators. Now, there's gonna be uh, one of three keys. Uh, they're going to look like this, uh, keys on your calculator. So this is called a carrot key, it's an upside down V, or you might have something like a Y to the X or an X to the Y. So you're gonna have to find uh, you know, one of these buttons on your calculator. But when we want to do something like say two to the third power, okay, you'll type in this bottom number first, that's called the base. So uh, type a two. And then here, for example, we'll type uh, an upside down V. This is a very common um, uh, function on calculators. Again, this gives us the exponent to the power. Okay, so this would be two, a carrot, or one of these other keys, and then three, okay, then we hit equal, and in this case, uh, you should see an eight. So you can kind of test out, you know, whatever calculator you might be using. So two to the third power, uh, you would type out something like this, and you would get eight. All right, now that you understand how to plug in powers and exponents into your calculator, you could go 
Uh, let's see here, 10, uh, then the carrot key, and then uh, zero. And then uh, hopefully, if you did this correctly, you'll see a one. All right, but better yet, uh, hopefully you just knew that anything to the zero power is equal to one. All right, so if this is one and this is one, and these answers are one, well, there's no other options, right? It's gotta be all of the above, even if you don't know the answer to this thing right here. So, you know, just kind of common sense test taking for those of you that have to take a test. And for those of you that just like to kind of figure out challenge problems, hopefully you found this pretty simple. All right, so let me go ahead and explain this last thing. This is not that difficult. And maybe some of you remember uh, this from your, uh, you know, days when you took, you know, advanced math like trigonometry. Okay, now if you remember this, and for some of you, maybe that was like 1981 or maybe like 1967, you know, it uh, could have been many, many years ago. But this right here is what we call, it's part of something, what we call a trigonometric identity, right? So sine squared, the sine, squ sine uh, we square the sine of an angle and we add it to the cosine of uh, the square of the cosine of an angle, it's equal to one. All right, so uh, this is what we call a trigonometric identity. And for those of you that actually knew this, well, that is super impressive. All right, but uh, now uh, for those of you that are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I have no plans on uh, learning trigonometry, but maybe you could uh, stand a review in basic math. So if that's the case, let me give you some specific recommendations. But uh, before we do that, I need you to quickly do this, and that is to hit that subscribe button. I definitely uh, need your help to grow this channel, okay? Now, there's two words hopefully you have in your vocabulary. Uh, the first is uh, goal, okay? And the second word is help, all right? So hopefully you have some goals. Uh, if your goal is to learn math, maybe you're trying to learn pre-calculus or trigonometry or calculus, set a specific goal, okay? Now, there's a whole... Uh, whole thing about goals, you know, they're smart goals, you know, they got to make it measurable, you got to have a certain amount of time uh, when you achieve your goal. Uh, but anyways, you should at least have a vision of what you want to do. Okay, now again, if it's coming, if it's, uh, you know, related to math, you can't have, and hopefully you don't have a vision of, I'm bad at math, I just want to pass with a C minus, that's not a good goal, because you're capable of doing so much more. Okay, so set high goals. But in order to reach your goals, you're going to need some assistance, all right? Like my goal is to continue to grow my channel as large as possible. I've done pretty well uh, to this date, but I want to continue to go. So I need help, but I do have a goal and I'm asking for your help. The best way to, uh, you can support this channel is by simply subscribing to that, uh, to or hitting that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell so you get my latest videos. But a lot of what I do in my videos um, is give some you know, thing, advice that's very important uh, to being successful in math that has nothing to do with math. It has to do with your thinking, okay? And some of you might find this kind of trivial, like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just stick to the numbers. Uh, you know, don't try to cancel me on my goals, blah, 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 blah. Listen, I'm telling you right now, this is the secret to really being successful at anything, okay? And uh, I've been able to do some pretty amazing things in terms of helping people succeed in math, and I always start with their mindset, okay? So check in with your, your attitudes about things. You know, do you really feel good about, you know, are you confident? I mean, do you feel good about your ability to learn math? Now, if you're struggling, okay, go get the right kind of help, okay? Don't just do a little bit here, a little bit there. You gotta take this stuff seriously, but I'm here to tell you that you can definitely go as far as you like, um, you know, as far as your goals are, um, are related in terms of math, okay? So please don't give up. And again, if you need my assistance, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. But hopefully, uh, you know, you got some sort of entertainment value out of this uh, little video. Now, the thing here that I also like to try to do in a lot of my problems is to review how to handle multiple choice questions. Because in math, when you do have multiple choice questions in, uh, in other subjects as well, but particularly math, you can use the answers, okay, to figure out the correct choice, right? And even if you don't know what this thing means, the whole purpose here is just to get this uh, question right so you can get the points so you can get your lovely A plus at the end of your exam for those of you that still have to take tests. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.